So today it's uh, going to be a little bit more practical. We're just going to to figure out some menu from all the list we we have, and especially that like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Maybe we can go and do like different uh, for different days and give some some idea. But um, we're going to follow the principles for for each. So. According to the way we we saw uh, the the different kind the different taste what they do on the body either they nourish or they drain or they they grease <laughs> the 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 oil the the body then these characteristics will help every dosha to keep balance all along so that's why we say that food is a medicine because it's the first thing that allows you to keep good health if you are in a healthy, healthy state. And if you're not, also, you are probably going to notice that you, are, you, you, you would like to eat some different, different foods and the quality of food, if it's more liquid or solid or airy, light uh, to, to eat. So all these things, that we perceive with our senses or with the, or the taste, the smell and everything, these are the one that is linked to the intelligence of the body. And if it's the correct one, the one that we, we listen and we give to the body, it will always give a sense of relief or a sense of ease or a sense of happiness. But if we eat something that we thought was good for us or um, a craving. But as soon as we eat and it goes down to the stomach, it creates heaviness, um, fatigue, or feeling a little bit heavy also in your, in your head or giving like a light headache, then it was not the, the proper thing to, to eat. So the, the body knows exactly what it needs to recover or to, to stay healthy. And depending on which dosha you have, dominant, vata, pitta, or kapha, you're going to have different requirements. Some people love to put more salt. Some other people prefer to, to have food that is more split all along the days. So all these things depend also on your constitution. The principles, the, the nutrition principles for vata, we saw out of the six tastes, Sweet, sour, and salty help vata to be a little bit more grounded or to feel more nourished or probably to bring more oil into, um, into the body. Now we have all the different things. So we're going to design according to your likings. We're going to design a, a menu. Starting with breakfast. So these charts are made at the beginning, diet and activities. It's just a quick recap of what is vata, the characteristics of vata. So vata is cold, dry, rough, light, clear or transparent, doesn't have any oiliness. And so the food will need to have the opposite qualities to keep vata in a good balance, in a good shape. So vata, that's why the vata will do much better with food that is warm, moist, oily, and nourishing. Right, so what is the state of vata with the agni? How agni works with vata? Hmm? Irregular. Irregular. So vata might feel hungry, sometimes yes, sometimes not. And if it feels hungry, it's never a big appetite, it's more a bird appetite, bird, bird hunger that can eat more portions all along the day. So when it comes to portions, we're going to make for the vata person small portions and maybe more often. 
So we will squeeze maybe the mid-morning snack or mid-afternoon snack. So that would be roughly five. So breakfast in the table. What could we give to Vata? Something warm. So we could give porridge. Porridge? We what? can give. Warm yeah. Hot chocolate. <laughs> that, that could be hot chocolate if the, the, the Vata feels hungry. Yeah, hot chocolate would be good. So we, we can put porridge with oats. Porridge, we can add some nuts. Some dates. And some dates for the sweet dates. Some cooked food, uh, cooked food. No, cooked food. No. no, and we're going to put some spices here also to, to make it a little bit more digestible. So we can put cinnamon. Cooked would be better because it's we for vata we prefer to have something warm. It makes it easy to um, to digest. Ragi? Mm. Is ragi okay? Yeah, ragi would be also also fine. Um, you would add so here it will be warm, cooked. So either you cook it with milk, so it will be even more nourishing or just with water, and it will be a little bit lighter to digest. And then we're going to give some tea to, to drink. One tea with lots of spices, so we give masala tea. And if Vata wants, can add a little bit of jaggery. Or here also can add a little bit of, um, of sugar, if it wants. The sugar, we're going to, to choose a sugar that is um, not white sugar, but either jaggery or palm sugar or date syrup, something like that. We're not going to give honey for vata because honey has a property to, to reduce the, the fat or is astringent. So astringent goes against the, the vata. Then mid-morning. Mid-morning um, vata can, if vata feels hungry, can also have a snack to, to eat. And it could be any fruit that is taken from... And Vata person will need to, to make sure that it doesn't give any bloating or any, any gas. So from the fruits, we're going to choose fruits that are quite pulpy and juicy. So a papaya or a banana or like something, a mango. Then for lunch. So lunch, we're going to have, always think of proteins first. Proteins. Vegetables. Lipids. And carbs, cereals. So then, what kind of protein are we going to give to Vata? Here we can go with all the different yeah. diet that is possible. So if Vata is a non-veg, then we can give an egg <laughs> or two eggs <laughs> or some fish. Or chicken. Or chicken. If we do with the two eggs, we could go for... Um, Shabchuka. So this would be this would be a good um, a good dish, for example, like two eggs and you have the tomato, and on this on the side you can you can have like a pita bread or some cereals. So vegetables could be with tomatoes, lipids, olive oil, and cereals. We have pita bread. And here we have it balanced. Um, fish, fish, we can put it with the spinach. No, fish, we should have a Bengali, yeah. a Bengali dish with fish. Eggplant, plantain. So potatoes would be the carbs. And what would be the, the oil or the lipids used? 
mustard oil. So you see we have again the protein, vegetable, lipids, and the carbs if in the afternoon we need to, to use a lot of um, energy. Chicken with, what do you eat chicken with usually? Yeah, yeah. chicken ratatouille. We can make a chicken, Thai chicken. So we can put with some cabbage, uh, gr green beans. And the oil can be sunflower oil or coconut oil. Okay, so we keep in mind, we always keep protein, vegetable, lipids. And for vata, definitely a cereal also that is needed to give a little bit more consistency and for the nourishing part. They might go for a smaller portion compared to pita and kaffa, but at least it has all the ingredients that are necessary for lunch, the one that after the digestion will nourish the body during the night. So veg, here, uh, tomatoes, what could go? I mean, chickpeas. Chickpeas or hummus? Yeah. yeah. Then um, Bengali, red dal, and then tofu. Tofu for the Thai. So that's veg. Is it vegan also? Yeah, it's veg and vegan. Mid-afternoon snack, um, so then it could be some... Um, Mid-afternoon, it could be like some cereals, some nuts, grains, uh, dates, or a piece of fruit. It will depend, on again, on the appetite. And the nuts and seeds, they also have a good content of protein, so for... For the Vata people, it's good to give them a little bit of, of uh, volume. Then for dinner. So for the evening, what we're going to eat, we will choose protein or cereals and vegetables. And we'll have lipids again. I very much insist with lipids. I like the lipids. It's really part of the, um, of the health also for, for Ayurveda. There's a lot of misconception about the cholesterol, that L anyone who has cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, LDL, think that as soon as they take out the fat, so oil or butter and all, then the, the, the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, LDL, will reduce, which is not the case. We need to have these lipids. The lipids, like we saw, is the, the one that helps the flame or the digestion to be of a better quality. So if we want to get rid of the fat, we get rid of the refined, refined oil. But we still need to take ghee, olive oil, like anything that is called pressed would always be good for the body. And the liver needs the fat also to be able to produce good enzymes for the digestion. So lipids are very much important. And when we want to reduce weight, we will see with kapha, lipids are still there. They are not the one bringing the, the trouble. So I always like to, to mention it and to have different kind. We are not sticking to only one oil. Every different oil also have different properties or different way of being absorbed or different way of nourishing and um, helping different organs. So for the evening, it's going to, it depends on the appetite, if we feel very hungry or if we just want to have something and then we can sleep better because most of, many people have trouble to sleep if they feel hungry. So having a little thing in the stomach is always good and we want to have it quite light so then it doesn't create also some kind, the ama, the, the toxins during the night. It just allows a good sound sleep and um, without filling with an empty stomach. So we're going to choose between proteins and cereals. We're not going to have these two together. So the proteins also, we're going to choose light protein. So most of the time, it would be much better for everyone to have a veg dinner, a vegetarian dinner, instead of using the meat um, for, for dinner. 
it will be a lot easier to, to digest for, for the body. So for the evening, we could choose the proteins that my favorite of all, it's moong dal, that we make as a kechari with either a tiny bit of rice if we want, otherwise just moong dal with uh, spices. You know how to make kechari? No. no. It's this um, highly digestible, easy to, easy to make and well famous all over India. And that is given to people that are sick, people that feel weak, people who, who want also to, to have something nourishing but not too heavy. It has many properties. And to make, to make this, I like to make it with less, um, less rice. Normally, we take one cup and it should be half mung dal, half rice. But I prefer to put full mung dal and sprinkle on top some, some rice. And this cup, you, after rinsing, you put it in the pressure cooker with three cups, the same volume of water. Three cups, and then you leave two whistles, and it's ready. So you, you take a big, deep spoon. <laughs> And in that spoon, you put lots of ghee, put lots of ghee, and you're going to put some curry leaves, cumin seeds, and turmeric powder. When the ghee is, is warm, you add the curry leaves, cumin seeds, and turmeric. You, you put it on the flame. And when it becomes hot, you put the curry leaves, you leave them a little bit so they, they roast a little bit. Then the cumin seeds, they roast a little bit, and then the turmeric, that doesn't need to, to stay much. So as soon as you put the turmeric, you shut the, the gas. Mm? Okay. And then this mix, this mix, you put it in the, fry pan, in, the, um, in the pressure cooker, and you mix with your dal that is cooked. Yeah, and that's it. It's ready. And then if you want, you can put some, some vegetables with it, like yeah, beans or... Uh, the New Zealand spinach, the fluffy, fluffy, um, fluffy spinach, or carrots. Or... So here we have mung dal and some vegetables, could be carrots, beans. The lipids, it's the ghee. So pita will have much more appetite than the kaffa, than the vata. So the, the agni will be constant and strong strong, sharp, and powerful. So then, to help that flame, we're going to give in terms of portions, like good portions. Yeah. So we have some pita around the table. Who, who's eating what in the morning? <laughs> porridge also. Nothing. He asked me for porridge. Mm -hmm. Porridge, yeah. Yeah, so we can make like two different kind of breakfast. One porridge or some eggs. Eggs with bread. Yeah. Or it could be an omelette with or it some. Could be cheese. cheese. Yeah. Because cheese in the morning, it's a good idea to eat it. Just for pita or? Butter? For for anyone. For anyone. The cheese and yogurt. It's better to have it either for breakfast or for for lunch. Then after we. Four o'clock would be the latest. That's why ice cream, it's also allowed at four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream o'clock, four o'clock. So with the cheese, what, uh, we put bread. the cheese on what? On bread, bread also? Egg and cheese. Mm. Crackers. crackers, yeah. No, crackers no. for pita will feel too, too light. light. Yeah. With for vata, yes. Would prefer to, to have something a little bit uh, thicker. The porridge can be also with nuts and seeds, chia seeds. Coconut milk. Banana. 
And what do we give to drink to the, to the pita? No coffee. Tea. Tea and bean. <laughs> Buttermilk. <laughs> we can give green tea. We can give masala, masala tea also, could be good, or it could be mint. Milk, milk could be given to, um, to vata because it's uh, nourishing. Then after for pita, pita could digest also masala tea, but for kapha it might be too heavy. Now for lunch, uh, there's probably a mid-morning mid snack also, so they, they can have nuts, nuts seeds, um, banana, apple. Apple is good because it helps also the, the liver, the gallbladder the, for, the, for the bile. But they might feel hungry after just eating an apple. So let's have more nuts, nuts and, and seeds. It would be basically the same, the same as vata, but with bigger portions. Chicken, even red meat, it needs a lot of energy to digest and pita has a good energy for, for that. So that's possible for, for them to eat. The red meat would be nourishing for a non-veg vata, but then it might be too heavy and create some, some gas or belching or, or whatever. So for, for them, they prefer the, the meat that is a little bit lighter, easy to digest. So all the white meat from the birds, it's much better for the vata people. Same with the, with the fish. They, they prefer smaller fish than big fish. Salmon might be a bit too, even if it's oily, it would be very good for vata, might feel a little bit heavy. It's not at all compulsory to, to have the mid-morning or mid-afternoon snacks. It's just for, for the people who need and feel hungry. Otherwise, we just wait for, for the meal to come. Mm. So here we have um, chicken, red meat or fish. Vegetables. No egg, huh? Egg also. Egg also. Yeah, yeah. If you if you look at your um, at the chart for the pita uh, pita charts, when it comes to animal food, you have chicken, eggs, uh, fish, rabbit, shrimp, turkey. They're always good. When they put on the other side um, red meat or beef, pork. All this, it's because it's really heavy food to, to digest. So then we can have, we, we will never eat red meat every day. So if it's just once in a while and at lunch, that's fine. But if it's repeated, then beef can also give some, some cholesterol or can, can give some uh, trouble um, with the digestion. So when it comes to red meat, we always think that it's more like once a week. Chicken also once a week, and fish can be also once a week. Then some vegetables, what do we have? We keep in mind that pitta needs to have the liver also looked after. So any green leafy vegetables for pitta will always be good. Either we give a side dish of um, green salad, rucola or lettuce, uh, something with a, um, with a bitter taste, and then cooked food, so it, uh, uh, green leafy vegetables will always be good for pita. Protein will nourish your body during the night, will nourish your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your, the, the joints, the bones, the bone marrow, all this. So that's why we, we like to keep the protein for, for lunch as um, like compulsory. The lipids, um, pita can go with all, any cold pressed oil. Cereals or carbs for pita, we can give also any, anything. So they can have any wheat base carbs or rice, or potato. And then if we go veg, we're going to choose protein that are nourishing also from the vegetable kingdom. So the, the beans, beans are a little bit, so rajma, 
Rajma dal or um, like white beans. And then we can choose also one cereal that has more uh, protein. And here we will put millets. So here we can have also some um, uh, apple pie or some... Heavy snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also Peter has the discipline. So anyway, it's going for a run or it had just run or <laughs> whatever. So squeezing yeah. something to eat before, before running or after running to recover. Yeah, Peter can, can have these things. Muffin, cookies, <laughs> a bond of bread with some butter and some jam. <laughs> Viva Pita! And then dinner. So depending on the snack, how <laughs> it was, uh, Pita will have a dinner that is also substantial. Probably, it will probably be protein and cereals. For, for them. Let's have some um, red lentils or, yeah, or tor dal or split peas or kidney beans. With kaffa, kidney beans, kaf, uh, vata will, will have lots of belly, belly pain. Pita will do, will do well with it, but kaffa, no. Or it could be just vegetables with ladies' fingers, for example, that have been steamed and then in the, in the pan with ghee and um, ghee and a bit of salt. Here, the vata could have a nice rasam also to drink, make it more digestible. Rasam is like a spicy, very clear um, soup. So it's mostly, yeah, mostly liquid and have some spices. Black pepper, curry leaves, club, and cumin. cumin. So, what is the agni for kaffa? Uh, How is agni? Very low. Weak, no? Yeah, weak. Weak but greedy. There is, there will always be little space to put something <laughs> in the stomach. <laughs> Poor thing. So here we're going to reduce portion. So breakfast really depends on appetite. If doesn't feel hungry, doesn't eat. If feels hungry, going to eat. So the um, kaffa is also cold, heavy, sticky, slimy, oily. So we're going to give something that doesn't have these properties. So ginger tea, yeah, to, to drink. We give ginger or masala tea. So it will help also the digestion. And masala tea is definitely... Plain, yeah, no, no milk. Chai, yeah. Sticky chai, yeah, sticky chai is wonderful for, for kaffa. Mm. Because it also has honey. Honey is astringent and warm, so it burns the fat of kaffa. So, um, breakfast, so it's going to be, to be light. We can give some fruits. Porridge could be like just the classic um, oats with a bit of um, seeds and yeah, it's fine. But if Kafa feels hungry or if in the morning we'll have lots of physical work to do, definitely. No, so mid, mid morning we give uh, ginger tea. So for lunch, we need the proteins and for Kafa we're going to stick to proteins, vegetable lipids because the carbs are definitely the one that produce fat in the kaffa people or creates the bad cholesterol or the triglycerides high, high in number. So for kaffa, we are, we are not giving any cereals, but we give all the, the other... Kaffa always have the feeling that, oh, they're taking all my food out and can't eat anything at all. No, look at the list. So many things you can eat. <laughs> Non-veg, we're just going to choose also light meat to, to digest. So it, should, it could be chicken and fish or fish. Eggs are also okay. Kaffa doesn't like animals with four legs. They are too, too heavy. 
and pork big no for kaffa. It's too fatty. So here we call it mutton. But goat meat, yeah. Only Sunday you can have that. Not every day. Some vegetables, we, we can put many different things. Also, we're going, we can help the liver, so green leafy vegetables. Um, or beetroot would be good also. Yeah, everything should be cooked. Warm, cooked, and always with the spices. Salad for kaffa, it's not so, so good. Or if we have salad, it's just a small portion that will be eaten before the, the rest. And with um, parsley or coriander, you need to put some aromatic herbs or uh, black pepper in the dressing. Mustard, um, the dressing could have mustard just to make it easier to digest. And kaffa will ask for dessert. Let's give some pomegranate. Yeah, either you eat them dry or, or in a tea. Or in the afternoon, you put the fennel seeds in your liter of water and you drink it all afternoon. Keeps acidity down, keeps the bloating away, helps the digestion, gives you a nice breath. Well, after drinking a coffee, you take a few seeds, you will never have any acidity in your, in your stomach. It's a very good one to always have in the bag. The veg would be uh, tofu. Tofu has it gives lots of estrogen, so um, for kaffa it won't be so good. It might give cysts, now, especially kaffa women. Many of them, not many, sorry. Uh, some of them have uh, PCOD, polycystic ovarian uh, disease, and so tofu will increase the cysts or will increase any mass or whatever. So. For kaffa, we would not give uh, even the soya chunks also, we, we don't recommend. But dal or peas or beans, green peas, chickpeas, we give a veg clear soup, Le, um, steamed vegetables. Le, with your veg, you can put a potato to give a bit more consistency. So basically what we have to understand of this is the importance of lunch and all the ingredients you, you're taking at lunch because it's the one that is nourishing you during the night and give you the vitality, the good concentration, the mental power in the morning, <laughs> everything. So protein, vegetables, lipids, and if you are mentally um, active or physically active, you're going to burn sugar, you're going to, to burn, to give this energy, so cereals are very much needed. If it's more a day that is sedentary, then we will stick more to this kind of food. Hmm? So any sports will ask, or any physical, mental activities will always ask for cereals. More sedentary, calm day, protein, vegetables, lipids.